Hi everybody, this is Theoral. You can find me on the Marvel Champions Discord, answering rules questions, or doing the Card Text Podcast with Bob and Scott. We're here on YouTube where I've had a do a Marvel Champions playthrough and um, some various what if scenarios. So today I'm going to continue on the salvage operations. I started with uh, Drang and then did Infiltrate the Museum, and today we're going to do Escape the Museum. So um, I've talked before about some of these things, but um, basically a lot of what I'm doing here is reworking the modular sets to try and make them more interesting, kind of more standardized. Um, you know, I think there's been some que some comments recently on Discord with regards to modular sets about how much people dislike the Nemesis modular sets, like the single minion, single big minion modular sets. And I think part of that is because of the way that the modular set design has gone since Galaxy's Most Wanted of being kind of, it's like, oh, we'll give you a bunch of minions in a single modular set. And it's like, well, if I swap that out for uh, one of these single minion sets, the, the whole <laughs> scenario loses all of its minions. It doesn't work very well. Um, so having some, you know, alternative ways of doing that, I think is nice. Having things not be quite as extreme, um, I think it helps a lot with being able to actually use your modular sets in a modular fashion. Um, which is kind of my big complaining about it against where they've gone with the modulars where it's you have all these modular sets but you can't just swap them out unless you get a completely different experience every time um, which it's nice to sometimes be able to get different experiences but you don't want your kind of core design to be that um, and so I think the biggest thing that happens through my galaxy's most wanted change is the fact that the ship command is a standard modular set um, and that means you can swap it out with anything and it's only got a couple minions and so you know if you swap that out then kind of maintains the integrity of the scenario more or less um, for collector he has I've split up his modular sets and reconfigured them to make them more interesting um, and to give them kind of a little bit more unification. So, you know, you swap out one of these modular sets with something else, and it's not a huge change. He's still got a lot of what makes him the collector. Um, I would hardly wouldn't swap out all three of them, but you could. Uh, and having it split up like this just gives a bit more variability to what's going on and enables collector to have more options. Um, of course, you could just have some of this be standard in collector, and I think that would also be fine. But uh, for my concept and what I'm looking at, I thought it would be nice if this was what the modular sets looked like. So, again, the idea here would be use the Milano, um, as you always do, with ship command, and then you have these modular sets. And um, I haven't quite made up his cards, but the only change I really have for my Escape to the Museum is going to be the main schemes, and I think only the A sides. So, um, I'll just talk with, through that real quick. So, the idea would be instead of starting with the library labyrinth and nothing else. So I guess uh, backing up just a hair. So my kind of issue with Collector, um, the reason, the thing I would change about Col Escape the Museum is that it's a very low pressure scenario. And I think uh, it gives you these tools to be able to just like zap through those main schemes because the pressure is so low and it only goes up as you push on through the main schemes, you're kind of disincentivized from advancing. So the idea is, what if we bring some pressure into the game, uh, make you really want to get to at least stage two, and then once you're in stage two, you're kind of in range of stage three, and that's kind of where the majority of the game hopefully can take place, as opposed to as it is currently, where you kind of just hang out in stage one the whole time, and then you go to stage two, and then you just get the Milano, and so the game becomes kind of easier at that point. Uh, and then you get to stage three and suddenly you flip over the museum ship and you um, add all these ship command modulars, which I don't think I've, I, I've shuffled them into the deck like one time. I've only triggered the museum ship one time, like pretty much every time I play this, play against the collector in Escape the Museum, it's just, let's get out of stage three as quick as possible because I don't want collector activating against me with five, five stats. It's ridiculous. Um, I'm not interested in living in that world, so and I don't want the ship hitting me with <laughs> damage constantly and all of this stuff. So, um, so the idea here, the the change here then is that instead you start out with the battleship pounding on you, 
you still don't have the Milano. So you have to find the Milano. Once you find the Milano, these cards get shuffled in. And so then you're in a normal ship command scenario. At that point, um, the ship command will be the only required modular for this, just because that's what makes this work. You have to find the Milano and get out of the museum. That's fine. Um, and then he has these three modular sets that you can change how you want. And he's basically going to be the same. Uh, I, Monarch Star Killer, I think, is really cool. I don't think he needs to be part of Infiltrate the Museum. I like him as part of the modular, and that just means that we get to use him again here, which is great and thematic. And as much as I complain about minions, like, uh, as much as I dislike the idea of scenarios where there's a villain with no minions in his deck, I think if you have something like three modular sets, it's okay, because you can pretty much include some minions in those three modular sets. And that's kind of what I've done here. So this is collector's modular sets, and now you can swap them out. And you know, you can see some interesting things would happen depending on which ones you swap out. Like you might not swap this out with a low minion set because it's got six minions in it. You kind of want a lot of minions there. Um, but this one could be swapped out with anything. And this one, you know, you've got a few minions, but they're pretty weak minions. You swap that out. Uh, and hopefully they're just a little bit more balanced. Um, not in terms of difficulty, but just in terms of what they bring to the game. So that's what we're going to do. We're gonna take all of those cards and add them to his deck. And this is the standard Escape the Museum deck plus the one card of Monarch Star Killer. Um, it'll, of course, change a little bit with Ship Command because this has a few extra cards in it, too. All right. So now let's talk about who's going to be fighting collector we're going to use star lord with his leadership uh quote unquote precon so all right so precons i've been wrestling with this for a little bit trying to figure it out um so i had my concept of what the precons could look like and it works really well through wave one and then it just starts falling apart and i mean the basic issue is just they don't have as many reprints anymore um after wave one the decks have more new cards in them. So it, throughout wave one, decks typically had four new cards with three copies each. That's 12 of the 25 cards were devoted to triple copies. And then plus you have some allies and supports and things. And so usually it came out to around, um, I don't know, 18 new cards in a deck. Uh, maybe less than that, maybe 12 plus, uh, let's say four. So something around 16, 16 ish new cards, um, maybe a little bit more, 16 to 18, let's say. Uh, and then you'd have, you know, seven to nine reprints. Now, three of those reprints are the basic resources and two of those reprints are power ups. That's five of your reprints. So when you have nine reprints, that gives you two additional two of reprints or, you know, you could have a Avengers Mansion or, you know, so any of these one off cards. Um, and you know, that kind of worked out um, in that sense. And that, that worked out to say, well, let's replace six of the back of back cards with extra third copies and increase it to six different two ofs. Gives you more variety in your pre-cons and all of that stuff. Um, but after uh, wave one, starting in wave two, they the decks all look more like Miss Marvel looked in wave one, which is to say five new cards with three copies for 15 plus some unique cards and only a couple of reprints from the core along with the resources. Um, and what that means is that, so whereas through the first set, each deck has eight new cards, six in the deck, so four in the deck, four outside, I changed it to six in the deck, two outside, that's still eight new cards per pack. Um, but after wave one, starting in wave two, decks, hero packs typically include nine new cards. And that doesn't work out, as you can see, because my system only allows for eight new cards. I can't get in nine new cards in there. There's just not room within the 60 card pack as it is included. Um, I mean, I think that there are ways to do it. Uh, you just have to include more cards that fit in the deck and less cards that don't and you could do so instead of doing six new cards you could do say eight new cards in the deck plus 
one card outside of the deck. That's nine. That could let you do nine cards per pack. Um, but, of course, if you do eight pairs of cards, that's 16 new cards, plus four other new cards, singletons, and then you are got your resources, basically. So, you know, there's... And then you've got an extra card missing from each pack, which is kind of weird. I'm not sure how that happens. Um, but I guess you could throw in a singleton in the back of the pack or something. I, th I don't know. There's there's things that could be done. There's ways to make it work. It, to, work to work it out numerically, what you could do is you could do 15 cards and have one of the cards, one of the new cards, just be a one of in the deck. Um, but then you have to choose which card that is. That's not got the same kind of ring to it as what was going on before. So I prefer having two of each card. Um, but anyways, so that's what happened uh, last week with Gamora. Things weren't quite working out and I just realized that things don't work out. So I'm going to continue pushing on throughout this with some of these pre-con ideas and we'll see where it goes and I might need to change things up. Um, but I've given up on the idea that this is something that you could actually do. Um, just from the perspective of the number of new cards that they released I think there would need to be some shifts and I haven't quite figured out what those shifts look like and so for now I'm just kind of pressing forward with what we've got so yeah so what that means in practice what my decks have looked like is we have the five cards that are included in the actual pack plus one other new card um, in this case, comms implant, and we just kind of roll with it and pretend that these 12 cards, which take the place of the original 15 cards, works out. In this case, what I've done is I've just added basic resources back into Star Lord. So Star Lord looks fairly typical because the thing that was atypical about Star Lord is that he didn't have basic resources. Um, and so when I talk about, oh, I included more reprints, that's the reprint I included. It's not like some other reprint from the core set. But anyways, I know not everybody loves those resources being in every pack. And that's not always going to be a workable solution. Again, if you see the Gamora, if you look at how Gamora came out, uh, that's why. And that's why she has so many reprints. And it kind of got strange. All right. Let's try this thing. Um, so we start with a ship, seven threat, and we've got to clear that. Ooh, this is a nice amount of resources. Obviously, Aerial Supremacy is terrible. Target practice isn't awful, awful. I mean, it's just not a very good card. Or it's a very awkward card for leadership, but I'll just keep the rest of this. That's fine. Bad boy's good. Um, and then, since I am Star Lord, I search my deck for my other element gun. And we're going to want to play one of those. So, let's see here. If I used three to play Bad Boy, if I played Element Gun for free, and I played Cosmo for two. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap Daring Escape with the top card of my deck. So let's do that. Okay, it's a sliding shot, so that doesn't really change anything. Um, so three for that, two for that, this is free. And that's it. All right. So Cosmo is going to go ahead and thwart. Um, I'm going to guess this is an event. Oh, look, it is. No consequential for him. Then for one, two, three, I'm going to play Bad Boy. And for an encounter card, I'm going to play an element gun. And then I guess, since I have it, I may as well shoot it for three damage. And then I'll thwart. 
for two. Let's see if we can get past this first stage of the Milano and have, or the Mrs. Milano, find our ship. Let's find the ship so we can get out of here. One threat, collector attacks me. He's attacking for three plus a boost, because that's what his stats are. That's fine. One damage to his character I control. That's not very nice. Take three damage, and I get two encounter cards. The first one is that card, which is super annoying. And the second one is that card, which is also super annoying. Ouch. When my turn begins, I place a poison counter and take a damage. Okay. This is also at one. On the battle cruiser. It's gonna start doing damage at some point. Which is not lovely. Um Alright, so I have a bit of a problem here in that I have these two three cost things that I have to deal with. I think the hazard is probably worse than this one. I really wish one of these was an energy, but it's not. So I think hazard is worse than taking a couple damage. Although it's going to be a bit of a pain to get rid of that. I'm ready to admit. It's really annoying. This is so annoying. Alright, we're gonna throw that for two. I'm gonna stay here a mode. I think we're gonna use bad boy to clear some stuff. Deal three damage to him. I need to use bad boy to survive. Ah, what the heck? We we'll use Cosmo. Um, I'm gonna guess this is an uh event. Uh, it's a resource. Bye, Cosmo. You were useful. Looking for one like that. Hang on to get ready and see if I can get three different resources next turn. Lovely. One threat. Star Lord. Uh, this goes up by one. Oh, and then I take three indirect damage. I couldn't use Cosmo. I had to not use him. Because I absolutely had to have him available to take damage for me. Uh, yep. So, okay, that defeats Cosmo. And I take one damage. Uh, add one more threat here. Alright, he attacks me for three damage. I discard bad boy, flipped alter ego, draw three cards. Two cards. Two cards. Alright. I get a single encounter card. Banishment. I can exhaust Quill to remove this or discard an element gun from play. Well, I would kind of rather not discard an element gun. So I guess I'm going to exhaust as much as that sucks. Get that out of the game. All right. This goes up to two. I take two damage because life is hard. Three different resources, huh? I don't know why I held that. I have to go hero mode. I have to discard three different resources. I don't have an ally. I can't block his attack. I died. 
He attacks me for three. I can't defend it. There's nothing I can do. Well, that sucked. Um, I think it's fair to say that I just got too much indirect damage. I mean, poison is pretty rough. The fact that I got two three-cost cards to get rid of instead of like a single minion or anything that I could actually deal with. I got two attachments. So this seems a little bit fast again uh, for solo play. So maybe it needs to be two plus one per player. Um, this is kind of where I was settling on for these two ships, so this and the patrol ship. I really think two plus one per player and one plus two per player might work those out better. Um, just because every turn is really brutal. Um, obviously, you got to get through this to get the Milano so you can stop that from happening all the time. But, yeah, every other turn is just a lot. Okay. Leader of the Guardians is great. Adam Warlock is great. Bad Boy is always great. I probably can't play all of those cards, but let's see what we can do. If I draw three new cards. Hey, it's Nova Prime. All right. Well, we've got a little bit of a rough start this time. But what we could do is we could play Leader of the Guardians for three, play Adam Warlock for free, give him a calm implant and let him thwart even though I don't get to use his response. Kind of an annoying thing, but I think that's where we're at. Um, so, do I want to save my element gun or bad boy? I think I'm going to save bad boy. Starlord's deck is so expensive. One, two, three, for leader of the guardians. Ganner guard for Adam Warlock. Play one, give him a common implant. He thwarts for two. Three. I thwart for three. I draw five cards. Yandu's pretty cool. Alright. One threat, one counter. Collector attacks me for two plus a boost. Two. Alright. Doing counter cards. First one is a psionic ghost. Which stinks because I'm now confused. And I have you now. So I'm also stunned. Nothing here but normal collector shenanigans. And I get attacked for two, three, and a tough status. Wow, look at that. It's like fighting against. Um, It's like fighting against Doctor Strange. What's energy do? Heal? That's nice. All right, we're going to do that. One, two, three, four for Yondu. Um, doesn't that suck? I've got one. Two damage. Hmm. All right, we're going to play Bad Boy for an encounter card. I'll probably just use that to go Alter Ego, actually. I'm going to Exhaust to clear my stun status, rather than my Confused status, because my allies can confuse pretty well, or do stuff pretty well. These two are just going to both attack, and 
That's going to heal me for three because it's an energy resource. I could use plus attack, but I don't have it. Yep. Cool. Five card hand. One threat. The collector attacks me for two plus a boost. I'm just going to dodge this, I think. Four damage. Yeah. Instead of taking four damage, six damage, actually, I'm going to take zero damage and draw two cards. I got an encounter card. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, it's two threat. Hopefully I don't lose. It surges. Into Starkiller. And a master plan. Just when you think things couldn't get any worse. Ah, Star Lord. Star Lord, Star Lord, Star Lord. Come on, stinking. Give me one of those four stupid side schemes. Tell you what. Um, this is also it, too. And I've made that one plus two per player at this point. Just so you're aware. Alrighty, so. Yondu would love himself a laser blaster. Blaze of Glory is great, but. Heal four damage from your identity. Uh, really? Really? So. Uh, so the problem with Blaze of Glory <laughs> is that. It's too much. Problem with everything else is that it's too little. So seven damage. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I could kill Monarch Star Killer. Can't kill the Sign of Ghost. Actually, I end up doing eight damage if I play the Element Gun. Maybe I just don't play the element gun. Cost three. Well, cause th th I mean, okay. If we play the element gun for free, then we can play a laser blaster and we can play gutsy move. The problem is gutsy move only removes four threat. And that's only if I thwart to clear my confused status that this stupid sign that ghost gave me. There is no world where I can kill Monarch Star Killer and <laughs> why am I getting a seven health minion and a five threat scheme? I know I added this minion to this scenario. The game is not being kind. The game is not being kind to me. So I think I leave the side scheme so that I can take some hits. Given that I'm leaving the, leaving the side scheme, I might have to do some other stuff. So, uh, yeah, let's fast talk Cosmo back to the top of my deck. Ooh, that does change things. That changes things a lot. All right. Here, actually, we're going to pay common plant for a laser.
laser blaster on on Yondu. Okay. Uh, but then I can't use the element gun. Sorry, I'm not talking. So if I so with get ready, I can use Yondu and deal four damage, and then I could use the element gun to deal three damage, which is great. Um, if I play the element gun with my ability, then I have to spend a resource to use it. That resource, unfortunately, means I can't play gutsy move. On the other hand, I could play Blaze of Glory, which is a little bit crazy, but it enables Yondu to kill everything. Adam Warlock can thwart this by himself, and I lose Adam Warlock, but that's fine, I guess. And Yondu just takes a bit of damage. I honestly think that's what I'm going to do. Never the way you want this to work out. All right. Uh, sorry. I, again, I don't get to use Adam Warlock's ability. Um, all right, I play Element Gun for three less. I use Element Gun with this to deal three damage to Monarch Starkiller. Yondu deals four damage to Monarch Star Killer, defeating him. Get ready, Yondu. True, I could have saved a mental and let Adam Warlock do that instead, but there's no reason to. Alright, Adam Warlock or Yondu does four damage to this guy. Uh, his attacks have overkill, so he pings off the tough. Now Adam Warlock. Thwarts for five. One, two, three, four, five, because of Blaze of Glory. Thus, that's defeated, and I heal four, which I can only heal two of, because things are super annoying. And I'm just going to punch that sucker for four damage, because I can. I take one, Adam Warlock takes one, and Yondu takes one. And I get a new five card hand, which hopefully will have some slightly more useful stuff. Hey, look, I can make Yondu deal two extra damage. One threat. One of these. I take three indirect damage. All right, Collector attacks me for two plus boost. Three. Three plus boost, four. I really hope one of these isn't a bonus attack. It's another side scheme. One threat, and I have to choose and discard a card I control. That's going to be this laser blaster off Yondu because I really feel like Yondu's probably going to die. <sighs> Flipping stupid things. All right. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking I'm screwed. Um, I'm thinking I beat up the collector, drop him to two two stats, not boosted, from three three. Gosh darn it! It's so worthless. Ah, uh, it's so worthless. I'm bad at Star Lord. I think that's what I've decided. I'm really bad at Star Lord. All right, I'm gonna clear my confused status because that's causing me trouble. If I defeat that, I get to draw five cards. So we're gonna daring escape. Deal a face down encounter card. Ready, my hero, draw a card. That's there's a gutsy move. Thwart this for three. And then 
spend one, two to play Cosmo. Uh, Cosmo is going to guess that the top card of my deck is an upgrade. Cool. Force that for two. And having defeated that, I can now draw two cards. I can deal four damage. That's not amazing I can remove four threat or I could just defeat him I sliding shot him for six flip him over to this side and thwart three I'm honestly super tempted to just kill off Yondu here. Um, but I think he's going to block for me so that I don't die. I could go Alter Ego. I'm going to try Stay Hero mode for a turn. Hey, Jet Boots and all of those cards. Look, finally got some of my bonus cards. All right, Yondu's going to block for me and take four damage. Um, this is back at one. Doing counter cards. Please don't be direct damage. I'm confused again. Stop confusing me. Thank goodness. Finally a servant bot. Alright. Well that's easy enough. Kill a servant bot. Cosmo is going to thwart, and I'm going to guess this card is an event. Oh, he's back at 10 hit points. Um, I'm just going to flip to Alter Go and recover. Spend two for Jet Boots, and spend one for Star Lord's Helmet. Okay, I finally have all my stuff out. Three cards left in my deck. Hey, look, an extra encounter card. One threat. He schemes for three. And a bunch of unblockable damage. <laughs> extra encounter card. This is a two, by the way. It's this egg. And under fire. Oh look, I get the rest of his deck. It's a psionic ghost. I'm already confused. I take un 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 unblockable damage. And he schemes for two. Plus another psionic ghost. Well, at least the psionic ghost doesn't kill me. Also, He's went through his whole deck now because all these stupid things. Well, I can use that to ready my identity. <laughs> Yippee. Alrighty. Uh, I pretty much have to recover. I don't have much choice there. Um, this is not really that bad. I just need to be able to do some stuff. So I think we can just flip to hero mode here. I'm going to use this because you always have to use it to play any cards out of his starter deck. Fortunately, I can just defeat a non-elite minion. That's great. Um... Oh, you know, before I do that. I feel like Aerial Supremacy is just not going to get me much. Even if I could deal three damage to two enemies, that doesn't seem 
super strong. So I think what I want to do is, I don't think I want to Blaze of Glory this turn. So let's not Blaze of Glory. We'll go swap that with the top card. Oh, I guess I don't want to Blaze of Glory any turn. That's what I'm saying. All right. Anyways, it doesn't matter. So Cosmo is going to thwart. Yeah. For an event. Which I knew that was an event. So knocks two's right off. Nova Prime is also going to thwart. Which defeats that and readies me. Oh, shoot. I think I failed to take something into account. I'm confused. I failed to take that into account. I could not thwart this and ready my identity. So I had to thwart this. Which is going to go up three now, which is thinking ridiculous. Um, we're going to have Cosmo a laser blaster. And we're going to shoot this guy for three damage. And we'll hold on to Yondu because we can play him. Although, maybe Beta Ray Bill would have been better. I don't know. Life. Uh, I take three indirect damage. I mean, I'm basically dead. Here, we're going to give him the Laser Blaster instead. Because I know he can kill the Assignment Ghost with it. Oh, it doesn't matter. Alright, whatever. Cosmo's going to block this. It did three damage. Oh, look, that would have killed me. Sonic goes goes attacks me. I take two damage. I'm ready to die. I'm stunned. Oh, I don't know why I'm exhausted. I'm stunned. Collector attacks me. Cause of course he does. For four damage. That's Nova Prime. He's all done and the collector schemes and he wins for th since he schemes for three well that's crazy so just the battle cruiser overtunes this or collector or star lord is so bad at this that he can't manage it i'm not really sure which one it is um yeah maybe maybe i just made it really hard Starting with that battle cruiser out. I mean, it's always felt s silly to me to start with the library labyrinth. Ugh. Collector. So many statuses. So many statuses. You need status cleansing. You need some way to deal with all this stuff. I don't know. I don't know, man. A lot of it comes back to the whole um, collectors modular sets and this is where I haven't done anything like to me escape from the museum has always been a pretty st standard scenario and I mean I did some things I did this and this is huge as it turns out um, too much I guess too much. You have to get off this stage one, and that's hard. Um, I really thought I would have done it. This being buried on the bottom of my deck did not help things. I should have had a six card hand. Going into the next turn, because I had an extra encounter card. Oh, I had jet boots. I could have prevented one damage. Look at that. I have two health. Ha ha ha. Doesn't matter, because he's schemed out. Um, hmm. Anyways, you take the damage from Drang, copy and paste it into Collector, it's too much. So maybe just needs to not introduce any of Star any of this until you get to stage two. Uh, the thing I don't like about Collector, I mean, the one thing about Escape the Museum that I do find a little bit frustrating is that stage one is like this build stage. There's no pressure to leave it. And this 
provides that pressure because you kind of you need the Milano the, to mitigate this. Um, the Milano offers significant mitigation, but the question is: Is it just too much? Is the Star Lord precon just so bad? Am I just getting enormously unlucky? Um, those are the questions that I find myself asking. I mean, the Star Lord precon is pretty bad. I don't know that I've ever played the Star Lord precon. I don't, I don't think I've ever looked at it really. I did not realize how bad Star Lord's precon is. Um, I'm also not great at Star Lord. I readily admit. I know there's a, I know there's some strategies around how many cards do you take and all of that. Um, how often do you deal yourself a card for that extra stuff? And I, I mean, the problem with the Starlord Precon is that it doesn't turn anything into acceleration, right? Like I'm used to using that ability quite a bit because you know you throw out like a Helicarrier with it for free. That's a you're getting great value. Um, Leader of the Guardians, Element Gun. These aren't the cards that you want to be throwing out with it and throwing out your super expensive allies and sliding shots and all of these things, right? I mean, it's just not not cutting it. He has no no resources. I don't know that I really never really considered that before. So I think I'm going to suggest that the issue here is that Star-Lord's precon is really, really bad. Um, and that gives him a lot of additional struggle. Obviously, I didn't play Nowhere once I finally got it. And Star-Lord's helmet is a lot of resources. Star-Lord's helmet kind of makes him function. So... I don't know. Don't know what to do about this or where to go from here. But that's where we're at. Um, I'll probably just try another hero again. Use somebody like Venom. Venom will win because Venom always wins. And um, I'll just shelf this Star Lord situation and say, yeah, this is kind of why I didn't play Star Lord <laughs> for so long and through my playthrough. Um, There's a lot I like about Star Lord. Star Lord's he's a fun character to play. It's just um I don't know. He can't handle this. This is this is well outside of his capability. Uh this is way too much dark damage. So I have to figure out how to balance this out with the idea that you need to advance to stage two. Um the collector's rough when you do that because he's a four four. And I may have just taken one of the manageable schemes in <laughs> Coxie's Muff Wanted and turned it into a completely unmanageable scheme. That might be what happened here. Uh, a scenario, rather. Hmm. Yep. Maybe it's back to the drawing board on this scenario. I don't know. Anyways, uh, if you like this and want to see more of these videos, like and subscribe. Uh, if you have any comments, any things that you think I should be doing differently uh, for this scenario or reasons that you think it failed, let me know. And I'll see you next time.